Okay, so today is the day we hope. We're going to try and get this uh, two-stroke Detroit started. It's an 8V71. It is a non-turbo version. Um, if you don't know about uh, 8V71s or a two-stroke motor, the way they work is uh, instead of having four strokes like a traditional diesel, they only have two strokes to complete the cycle. Now, the way it achieves that is in the sleeve, instead of having uh, intake um, intake valves, you have holes all the way around the sleeve. So when the piston comes down past the holes in the sleeves, it's, it has air being pushed in by a blower down the center. So it takes air, shoves it down the center <clears throat> around the piston sleeves, and sh every time that the uh, piston comes down below those holes, it fills the cavity with air and the piston comes up and compresses it. That's how they got away with just being a two-stroke instead of a four-stroke. There are some other differences on the, this particular engine itself, but you get the idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if these batteries will take a charge. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm going to look for adapters. I think I have adapters to go from the top post to the stud post batteries. And I could just take this apart and put a couple of 31s in there, make things a little bit simpler. So I'm going to work on that. We gotta get the fuel system ready to go. We gotta get the valve covers off. Make sure the rack and the injectors are free. And we gotta get. Uh, we're gonna eliminate all the fuel filters that are there in the existing lines. We're gonna set up a temporary fuel system. So let's get started on batteries first. All right. So I called in the heavy reinforcements for the detailing, so that you know it's a little less disgusting to work on. And the first thing we're gonna do is get this headliner down, which is full of mouse crap. We just barely moved it. And, all the mouse crap came around here so there won't be a lot of talking because I don't want my mouth open when this comes down so I gotta get the screws out of here real quick and then we'll get it down Woo, lordy that's gross <laughs> there's a giant uh, nest right there Do you want me to tear the all the insulation out? Yeah, it's all all of it's coming out. That that crappy flashing's coming out. Everything's coming out. You want the gun? The screw gun? Yeah. Alright. I'm not sure I want this guy working on my stuff. Rubber bushing. The washer that goes over it. Washer? Washer. No rubber bushing rubber bushing no washer that's the way it's supposed to be rubber bushing and a cone washer on top and look there's the one that goes over there these knobs are stuck One injector stuck. They are all free. Gotta be kidding me. 
Okay, so I got the valve cover off and I went to go move the rack and look at this. It's moving as free as free can be. And even better than that is all the injectors are moving with the rack. None of them are stuck. They're all tight under the rockers, which I'm going to go ahead and tap on each one of them and make sure that um, they don't stay open, they don't stay plunged down, you know. Um, but man, look at that. That rack is in there, and uh, they're all tight. Yeah. Yeah, they're all tight. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, so that's fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get a brass punch and I'm going to tap on the injectors and make sure that they'll all move up and down freely. Softer metal hitting on harder metal. I know some people are going to want to suggest that I go to the Bus Grease Monkey or some of the other YouTube channels that work with Two Stroke Detroits and do a lot of videos on them. But, you know, I'm pretty comfortable with this motor and its design, how it works, what to look for, and its problems. So until I get to a point where, you know, I'm uncertain, or unfamiliar, or uh, I need, need some advice from someone or some particular specs, uh, I'm going to keep moving forward, but if I get to that point, trust me, I will reach out to someone who knows a lot more about them than I do. I mean, these things are still just an internal combustion engine, and which needs, it has to have fuel, it has to have air, it has to have compression, and the timing of all those things for it to run. This is no different. It just has a few different pieces of how, or different ways of how it gets it, versus no, normal, traditional, um four-stroke engine. A four-stroke engine would have an intake valve that opens and lets the air in and the piston would suck the air in. That's how we get vacuum. Uh, and then it would have a, an exhaust valve that closes and opens and exhausts the basically the fumes from the explosion. So in this one it's slightly different because we don't have any intake valves. The way that this motor gets air in the cylinders is different. It still has exhaust valves. So what happens is there's a blower in the center of this motor between each head. That blower brings in the air and pressurizes it and sends it and circulates it around the piston sleeves. The actual sleeves the piston runs up and down in. That sleeve has holes in the lower portion all the way around. So when the piston comes down, that pressurized air is pushed into the combustion chamber in above that piston and when the piston comes up that air is already somewhat charged as far as pressure and then the injector will fire also when the fuel atomizes and the piston comes up and compresses that fuel and air mixture it will explode it ignites when it does that is a driving force that pushes the piston back down <clears throat> that is how this two-stroke differs from a four-stroke just in the fact of how the intake is the intake air is routed and and pushed into the cylinder now being that this is a v8 and a two-stroke that means it is a completely different rpm range of operation than we would typically see in a diesel first it's a v8 which typically a v8 diesel engine will operate a higher rpm most of the time a v8 diesel will have lower horsepower than your traditional long stroke uh, big torque inline six so when they have a shorter stroke they can run higher rpms um, 
this is about the same thing. It, it's a V8, so it's going to run higher RPMs because of that, and it's going to run higher RPMs simply because it is a two-stroke. So now what I'm doing is, if you may have seen, I took a brass punch, and I'm tapping on every injector and making sure they're free and they're not stuck, and I'm also tapping on all of the valves, all the exhaust valves, and I'm making sure that all those valves will move freely in the head because the last thing I want is to start it up and have one exhaust valve hang up and a dead cylinder, one that won't fire because it can't seal the chamber to create compression and combustion. So I go over all of this and I look at the fuel lines, make sure we don't have any cracks or any leaks or anything obvious going on. And I check all the rockers to make sure none of the adjusters had backed off. All in all, this motor is very clean. I mean, I went over it, uh, all the, the top end stuff, and I was just amazed at how clean this was. So hopefully we got some good results and it turns out pretty good for us. Okay, I cannot believe all those injectors on both sides are free. I got the pin all the way shoved in, it's tight. So that would be Everything's working good. Looks like there may be a fuel leak on this line. We better check that, make sure it's tight. No, that's just motor oil. Okay. It's hard to tell because the sun's coming in this way. Okay, this side appears to be good, so we're going to uh, I'm gonna put the valve core back on temporarily while we get the fuel system uh, and temporary fuel system put in place. There's what that loud noise is. What? I just wanted to tell people if they wondered what that loud noise was, it's you vacuuming oh. up the 800 pounds of mouth crap. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. Coming along though. Alright, we're going to sample what's in the fuel filter here. I want to see if it's got water in it or what we got. It looks like there's a mud dauber's nest down in there. So it's probably not going to let anything come out. I don't want to come out. So we're going to take the filter off of the top. Take the bowl out. Take the whole canister out. Bucket I've cleaned out mostly. Let's see how bad it is. Well, do it. Oh, look at that. Look at how gross that is. Yeah. Hmm. Fantastic. So that was apparently off road fuel and uh, crap. Might as well go ahead and get the other one out, get both numbers, and go get new filters and go from there. Well, 
nothing else was a good sign it had fuel in it. So at least it was pumping, it was sucking fuel from the tank anyways. Because this one feels full also. that hose right there. Just hold it while I do this. Ugh. Mm. Okay, let's get this cleaned up. Alright, so there's what comes out of your filters. I mean, that's just awful. Look at that crap. And realize that, you know, if that's what the filters look like, the fuel tanks are not far behind so the last we want to do is you know pull these off clean up the insides of them I'm gonna clean the outsides too just haven't got to that as of yet but we don't want to put new filters in here and then go pump that same nasty crap out of that tank so we'll get our temporary uh, fuel line set up. all right it's cleaned out I got my new filter here put this down in here and we're gonna fill this So I pulled off the fuel line that goes to the tank and I put on this temporary. I know the keyboard warriors are chomping at the bit, just itching to type that that's air brake line. It'll be just fine. It's better than a piece of crap that was on there and it's only temporary. And I've got to run down in here to a five gallon jug of diesel fuel with fresh diesel in it. And I've done the same thing with the return line. I've removed the old line, I use this line. And I got it running in a bucket because what we're going to do is when it cranks over, we're going to hopefully flush all that crap that's in the block out into here and not run this into our good five gallon bucket over here fuel. So we're going to run all the crap into there. Once it clears out, then we can run the two into one. out that means we got it good and full. Mm -hmm. Alright, next thing we're going to do is one, shut the air compressor off, um, and then we're going to work on taking the intake. We're going to take that boot off the intake. So if we go to start it and it tries to run away, we can put something over top of that intake to shut it down. Because it's very common for these two strokes to be able to suck fuel, whether there be oil or whatever, a leak somewhere. It can suck the engine oil into the combustion chamber and run off of that. So, you know, we already got indications we got some oil leak around the exhaust. So we want to make sure we're prepared so if it starts to run away I can put something over, the, over that intake and suffocate it so it can't get in the air and then it'll shut down before it grenades because if it goes to run on engine oil or 
whatever else that's flammable that it could suck in there there's no no way to regulate the rpms it'll just go as as fast as it can because diesels are fuel regulated not air regulated so this thing's set up it can suck as much air as it'll take so we have to have a way to stop it from getting air because if it can suck fuel from something else you can't stop that in, in a lot of cases so i'm going to get that off get ready i don't think our batteries are going to make it they've been charging for a while and uh, it'll just barely crank over so we'll see if they'll crank over a little bit if they won't then we are going to um, pull them out and put a couple of good group 31s in there so i'll get this intake ready to go next well, the old six boulders aren't coming back, so uh, I'm just going to ditch them. I'm just going to take all these out, and we're going to put a couple of Group 31s in. I picked up some adapters to go from Group 31 stud post to a top post. They just screw on. And when we do something with this truck, uh, we'll do something with the battery cables. We'll probably just, we can cut these off and put regular stud terminals on eyelets on here and just have jumpers from one to the next like we want but I'm gonna get these out of here now all right you see the old pressure gauge um, right here, yeah. tell me when you Alright, so this has two different shutoffs. One is a fuel cutout, which is a pull cable, and the second is an emergency stop. The emergency stop is a big flap on the intake. intake. That when you pull it, it releases a lever, it's a trip lever, and then it falls down and blocks the air off. Up until now, we've been cranking with that thing closed so that it wouldn't start because we wanted to get oil circulating all the way through the top of the heads on both sides make sure that was good and we want to make sure we could get fuel pressure and get the fuel system circulating get all that crud out before we crank it so now we have to crank it with it open So at this point, we don't have any fuel getting to the injectors. The way it works, it goes from your tank to that first filter, out of that filter, to the pump, out of the pump, 
to the secondary filter where it tees off and feeds each head which then feeds the injectors and then we have a return line that comes out of the, the heads to return to the tank I have no fuel return so therefore it tells me that the pump is not pulling anything we have no fuel supply so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put light shop air pressure into my five gallon can and just try and pressurize it and start forcing some fuel up to the pump and see if it will prime itself. Don't do this because you could make that can explode. So it's not a good idea. Don't do what I'm doing. All right, so at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit of fuel coming out of the return line, but that's because I had that uh, can pressurized. I don't think the fuel pump's working. Uh, I don't know if it's got a problem or if it's got, you know, something in it, but um, we're starting to get that, so it tells me we got a good prime. We're starting to get good prime on the fuel system, so that would be one more piece of the puzzle taken care of. Now, we're taking breaks in between cranking here to let the starter cool off, so we're just about ready to go again.
out of this thing. That's why I separated the two. So we didn't put that crappy fuel back into here. Push it back in, see if it'll fire back up. Oh, good lord. Go ahead. <laughs> Just gotta hold it for a minute. Yeah, all right. Wow. There you have it. The old two-stroke runs. I think that's gonna do it for this video. Next time, we will uh, do a little bit more work to it and maybe we'll take it for a drive. You got the lights on, lady. I do? Yep, as usual. Where are they? One of them switches that you hit. Yeah, look how filthy that fuel is. We didn't want that going back in. The return was about three and a half gallons, and we've sucked out mm, about two gallons of here, probably, or close to it. Inch, probably a gallon and a half, I guess. All right, that's it for this video, lady. Say bye, lady. Bye, lady. There's some of the crud that came out of the return side of the uh, fuel system. That's why I ran it in a separate bucket.